Oh, this one's going to be annoying for you. But I'm going to walk you there. This one I've been doing for a while. But yeah, you're going to like how to get to space cheaply. And shocker, it uses ethanol that you can make yourself. Hydrogen peroxide, that's fairly easy to make. A catalyst, a rocket chamber. Actually, a couple catalysts, a couple coolers and condensers and compressors. Some scoops, a nozzle, and a bell end. I mean it. Like, there's your recipe, all right? So, here's the thing. We already know about Hyperspace Pirate and his little pulse tube cooler. It's like, all right, we're going to make some ultrasonics here. Put them on dump, some diaphragms, all right? We're going to make a clear tube in certain areas and put some lasers in there that excite it in given spots. As we pulse tube, cool it, it alongside of these ultrasonics will corral a large amount, especially with these given laser lights, the air we breathe. All right, so we're not using the air we breathe though. All right, we're gonna suck it through a filter. So Vertassium did this and they sucked the air we breathe through a filter and they got more or less pure nitrogen. So it's like we can get out the nitrogen, we can get out the argon, we can get out a lot of this stuff. We're just going to suck it through. Then we're going to cool it using the pulse tube cooler method. But we're not really fully done, so give it a second. Because it's like the ultrasonics, like that usually introduces heat, but if you make a resonance frequency inside of it, and then you happen to use laser light to excite the given atoms and molecules, and then allow them to crash back out, you'll then, as it expands, create a phase change, briefly. That reduces significantly the amount of heat in the given gas. Now, this is one tube, and it's a pretty big tube, but then there's smaller tubes, insulated tubes, vacuum insulated, insulated tubes that go into a smaller tube, all right? It's going to be still gas, but like then it's going to go into a multitude of the same things. And you know, there are heat sink fins on these tubes, and so we're really trying to really increase, with you know some fans, the surface area and the amount of drop of, of heat into uh, this gas. And so then it's going to go into that smaller tube, a medium-sized tube, to an even smaller tube, small small tube with quite a decent amount of pressure and quite a bit more cooling. All right? And so it's like, right, we're going to really cool this sucker, right? And then it goes into the smallest tube, which is a... We're going to suck this up with a compressor, put it into a vacuum insulated, which, by the way, this compressor on the inside has to be first pre-treated because it's kind of like a superfluid oxygen, and it can react very significantly to uh, various, you know, elements in many, many different kinds of, uh, well, anything really, truthfully. I mean, it's, 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 it's oxygen, so it's, it'll oxidize practically anything, and it'll try and get into anything, so it, it, any container, really. But it's like, of course, you don't want that, so you're going to have to treat the inside as you suck it and then compress it in to this vacuum insulated multi-vacuum insulated pre-treated container all right and it's like we're not done though so hold your horses i got pretty strong amounts of high percentage pure oxygen, right? You know, once you get there, once you get there, right? It's, it's a multi-stage phase change pulse tube coolie setup thing. You know? But, it's like, alright, so we have water. Water is ubiquitous. We have some water. We filtered the water, we boiled the water, we collected the water, we did it a couple times, and now it's very, 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 very pure water. All right, so it's like we're to it's liquid oxygen though, but it's like you know they have these things called catalysts that help change H two O, which is 
the first start of a hydrogen peroxide, if you don't know, it's H2O2, I believe. Let me just, let me just double check that, you know, um, pretty sure it is. Let me just, just, uh, checking here or somewhere and just scrub around until I get like a fucking, uh, here it is, H2, two H2O2s. Yeah, yeah. So I'm pretty sure it's H2O2. And that's definitely possible with the right static and charge differences here in a given catalyst that with liquid oxygen being pushed into a gaseous state inside of this H2O, which just needs to add an O by making it... What is this again? Um, I think it's called a ionized state by running proper current through it and then adding an oxygen to an H2O, so it's H2O2. But if it's catalytic, which you can find that out online, then it's even less energy to do that. Anyways, point is, it evaporates. We're going to collect that. We're going to go through another tube system of cooling and condensing. We're going to go suck that sucker in, you know, just to make sure it's really pure H2O2. We're going to do this thing called just redo it, effectively. We're just going to redo the thing. We're just going to do it again. Okay, so we're going to allow for it to boil and vaporize. <laughs> and then we're going to do that. And then now we should have really pure H2O2. From some sunlight, you know, because, like, that produces electricity. We got some, some electricity, I think. We got some, some light, regular-ass light, you know, that we just corralled in a coherent form. We did some, like, ultrasonic. We can buy ultrasonics online. We just got to tune the frequencies, you know. Diaphragm. I can make a diaphragm with a pulse tube cooler on it. It allows for it to extend and, you know, the right resonance. I could, I could probably set that up with a multi-stage of this, you know what I mean? Like, and it's air. And I can buy these. Well, they're a little expensive, you know, for the nitrogen or whatever. But it's, it's like, it's doable. I can buy that. There's no licenses for any of it. I can make the pulse tube coolers myself, actually. So I'm just going to make a really explosive H2O2 mix <laughs> with some light, some, some, some electricity, a little bit of uh, magnet, uh, you know, stuff. Uh, I'm sure there's some, you know, charge things going on there. Just gonna do a little of this. And I'm pretty sure that I can buy like Everclear and then just like distill it, you know, like put some heat into it and then like put it, or really kind of just put it in a vacuum. So that way it comes out as like basically pure ethanol. Anyways, I'm going to I'm going to do you one better cuz it's like all right, I'm going to have this in a chamber, I have this ethanol around here whatever, right? I'm going to I during I'm going to have a pump here. I'm going to suck some of that. I'm going to like try and like turn it into more of a vapor instead of a liquid for the H2O2. I'm going to I'm going to have it move backwards and forwards. So it's like forwards and backwards. Did, 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 like a diaphragm, you know. And then I'm having like the the sides of this chamber both before the catalyst and after the catalyst undulate. So that way they really try and make this cool boundary layer reducing pump effect that I preheat this catalyst and, and, and then I just run some electricity a little bit through it and then it'll do this decomposition thing I guess anyways there's this ethanol I have right and there's this scoopy thing okay so it's like as as this really fast excited gas goes through this nozzle I think it's called this Ventruli principle, and then there's a Bernoulli's effect. Because of the low pressure, it tries to suck in more air. 
So if I make this uh, ethanol in a vaporized state, you know, just allow it for it to vaporize. You know, for, there's heat here being done. I need to cool the catalyst. You know, run it through with some of this ethanol. I'll just have it go off. And then there's this scoop that just sucks in the ethanol. And then it's before the nozzle. And I'll, you know, with some a little of these stator area, and go, with some electricity, and there's this, like, spark. I'm pretty sure I can do that. I'm going to add, like, another scoop of, like, this, this, like, little solenoid or something. And then it'll just open up, like, this scoop to the air as it's flying through the air. And I'll add in more ethanol. I'll cool it with this ethanol and this hydrogen peroxide you know this bell in nozzle kind of area thing with like i think there's this stuff called pumps or something i'm pretty sure they work they're gonna they, you know what i mean like they, they work they're they, it'll work And then, uh, I think I'm pretty positive here, you know, that it will burn so vigorously, I'll make so much thrust that the air around us will cease to be there. You know, as it sucks in air, you know, ram air, ethanol heat compression already burning stuff and then hydrogen peroxide thingy a nozzle so on bell in thing i said this right so it's like i'll just close that with that little solenoid thing no more air from outside but there's still oxygen from this hydrogen peroxide and so i'll just reduce the amount of ethanol And so I was like, I'll just put a satellite next to the ISS. There you go. How to get to space cheaply. Just do that. Why don't not do that? Why not just do this thing that easy and not be complicated with carcinogenic and harmful chemical? Just be cool and do good thing that's cool and simple and easy and go burr to space. Just do that. This bad boy holds so much fucking space in it get you there you know what i mean cheaply easy anyways done